Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Jenny. I'm from Jenny Card Designs. Thanks so much for joining me today. My YouTube channel contains content that is intended to share paper crafting tutorials and inspiration with all of you. I hope that you enjoy. There's something about my craft room that inspires, I guess, sort of the engineering part of my brain. When I come into my craft room, I'm always thinking about ways to create new templates and new designs that makes things simpler for all of you to recreate. I do not like spending 40 to $50 on a die that cuts out one simple thing. When we can do this so simply and easily with a scoreboard, a trimmer and some scissors glue, it's super simple. You just need to figure out the measurements. And lucky for you, this is my favorite part of crafting numbers, measurements, building. It's its totally my jam and I hope that you're enjoying them. So I've got a new one for you today for a pop-up slimline card. Super simple and easy, no crazy dies required. So let's get into it. So I'm starting my measurements based off of this slimline envelope. It's a basic standard envelope from Gina K Designs that measures nine and a half by just a little over four. So that's what I'm basing my measurements for this card box off of today. So I'm gonna start with a piece of eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock, and I'm gonna cut it down to nine and a half inches. Okay, so we've got a piece, a little left over, we're just gonna save that off to the side, and then I'm gonna turn my cardstock and I'm gonna cut this down to four inches. So I'm gonna have one panel that measures four inches by nine and a half inches. And then I'm gonna cut again at two and a half inches. Now, if you're really paying close attention, I ended up cutting it at two and three quarters. Just disregard that. We wanna cut it at two and a half inches. I come back and secretly trim this down an extra quarter of an inch. I just wanted to, you know, to put that out there. If you're paying close attention, it's two and a half inches, okay? And then we have another piece left over, and I'm not sure why I didn't show you how to cut this. This piece measures one and a half inches by nine inches, and this is going to be the sort of center bridge for the inside of your little pop-up element. Okay, let's move to the next step. We're going to take the piece that measures nine and a half inches by four, and we're going to score across the nine and a half inch side, we'll score at one inch, and then at nine inches. Okay, and then we're gonna turn the cardstock so that the one inch scored mark is at the top of your scoreboard. And I'm just gonna grab my little piece here to kind of mark out where this is going to go. I just wanna score the two and a half inch mark just down to that first little score line. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn the cardstock around to the other end and top, put that in the top of my scoreboard and I'm gonna score it at one and a half inches. The reason why I'm doing this is because then that little score mark will line up with the other score mark on the other side because we're going to trim these parts away. Okay, so that's the reason why I score them just so that we have a, a visual of where we're cutting away. I'm gonna show this to you close up so that you can see what we're doing. Okay, we're gonna take the other piece that measures two and a half inches by nine and a half inches, and we're gonna score again with the same measurements at one inch and then at nine inches. Okay, and then we're gonna set this aside and then we're gonna grab the center bridge piece and we're gonna score this at half an inch and eight and a half inches. So again, this measures nine inches by one and a half inches and we'll score at half an inch and eight and a half inches. Okay, so now we're just gonna make a few little trims into these pieces of cardstock. So this is what we have so far. And we're going to take the larger piece and I'll cut this nice and close so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna follow along that little score mark. I'm gonna cut this just to where it intersects on that score line. So just cutting it in one inch, nice and straight, because you're going to kind of see this. So I wanna make sure that it's clean and concise and straight. And then I'm gonna to come to the top and cut down. So basically we're just cutting away this little piece because we don't need it in our box. So we're just gonna cut that away. And then we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so we're gonna come in and we're gonna cut along that score mark nice and straight. And then cut that little piece away. 
So your piece of cardstock should look a little something like this. And this will all come together very simply and easily in just a moment. Okay, so the next part I'm going to do for this is just trim away a little tiny bit of an angle on the little half inch strip. Not the one inch strip, just a little half inch strip. I'm just cutting away just a little bit on both ends to create a little bit of an angle. You're not going to see this part. It's going to be glued on the inside. So I just find that it helps reduce some of the bulk in the cardstock and helps everything fold together nicely. So I'm going to take the second strip. And again, I'm going to do the same sort of half an angle cut. That's the only cut I'm doing into this part of the cardstock. I'm just cutting those little tiny angles in the half inch strip and that's all you're going to do to this piece and then the center bridge piece we're going to do the same thing we're going to cut angles but this time we're going to do it on both sides okay so the left and the right and then you should have something that looks like this all right now let's pull all of this together and create our little card box to begin adhering the box we don't need the center bridge we're just going to set that off to the side and we're going to take the larger piece and crease those folds so you'll notice that you have a one inch flap and a small half an inch flap on both sides so now we have this piece as well and that has a one inch flap and a small half an inch flap we're going to adhere the half an inch flap to the one inch flap on both sides okay so it's going to come together kind of like this it's actually super simple and super easy, but I'm just taking my time to show you exactly what to do so that you don't get confused or lost. And when you go to do it yourself, you're going to see how easy this is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and line these two pieces up. I'm taking that little half an inch from the back piece and adhering it to the inside of the one inch for the front piece. I'm going to use liquid adhesive here. I just find that this stuff is good and strong and it'll hold together nicely. Whereas sometimes over time, tape runner kind of, you know, lets go or becomes less sticky. So I wanna make sure that this stays together nice and strong. So I'm just gonna line this up, making sure that this piece is nice and straight. It is extremely important that this piece goes on straight. If you want to use a ruler or a straight edge of some sort to help you get it nice and straight, I would suggest that you do that. I didn't have a problem. I was fairly confident with what I was doing. Once everything is adhered nice and well, I'm gonna fold this piece over and I'm going to add liquid adhesive to that little half an inch flap and then fold the one inch flap over top, making sure that everything is nice and straight. And I'm just gonna press and hold on to this to make sure that everything it dries and adheres together nicely. And then when you're done, you'll see the box coming together. And then what I like to do is fold it from left to right and crease it both ways to make sure that the box is nice and even and doesn't have any weird sort of angles and everything is nice and straight and perfect I'm happy with that now let's move along to inserting the bridge piece now here we're going to create a little like a letter Z we want to fold the flap opposite ways from each other one to the back and one to the front if that makes sense okay so I'm gonna apply adhesive to both of those pieces and then I'm gonna insert it inside of the box. Now I measured this very specifically so that we could get perfect placement. The one inch side flaps are key to this particular part of the box. So the reason why those side flaps are one inch is so that when we insert this center bridge piece, those little flaps that are folded in are going to help line this right up in the center. So what that means is one part of it is going to adhere to the front of the one inch flap on one side and the other part is going to adhere to the back of the one inch flap on the other side i'm not sure if that makes sense to you i mean in my brain it does basically you want to adhere this piece in the center okay and the little z fold helps it to fold left and right nice and easy without any stress on it okay so here's our box completed now we're going to move along to decorating this box and turning it into something extra special. So I decided to use this paper pad that I had from Waffle Flower. I got this in a Simon Says Stamp card kit quite a while ago, and I had never even opened it. So I thought, well, I'm going to use this today. And then as soon as I opened it, it coordinated 
absolutely beautiful with my pink cardstock. So I thought I, I really wanted to use this special delivery little card. And so I pulled this out and I thought, okay, I'm going to use this. I'm going to set this aside and see how I can incorporate it into my card. And then I sort of flipped through this pack to take a look at the designs it has and where I was going to go with decorating this cardstock. I wanted to take a piece of this pattern paper and decorate the pink cardstock. And I went back to this sort of cornflower blue colored cloud background. So I just measured my card box here and the background is just a little less than eight inches. So I thought I would cut a piece down to seven and three quarter inches. And then, and then I'm gonna cut two pieces that measure two and a quarter inches. And then this way it gives me a cute little pink border all the way around my card. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So I'm gonna cut this down to two and a quarter inches. So one more time, the measurements for this piece of cardstock is two and a quarter inches by seven and three quarter inches. And I'm gonna make that twice. And then there's a little strip left over. You can use this strip to decorate the inside bridge piece of your box, but I decided not to use it because you're not really gonna see it. So I'm going to adhere these pieces of cardstock, one in the back part of my card box and one in the front. I thought that was really cute. So I just used tape runner here, I adhered that down. And then I thought, well, I had a little piece that I cut off that was running in the same orientation as these clouds. So I thought I'll use that for the side of my box just to make everything kind of, you know, cute and cohesive and, you know, filled in nicely. And then we don't waste this little scrap of cardstock because I wouldn't use it for anything else anyways. So I'm gonna trim that off, just eyeballing it. I'm going to add some tape runner and adhere that down to the side of my box. And I just love that cute, delicate little pink border around. It looks so lovely. The background is now too blue. So I decided to switch over to that pink special delivery card. I trimmed that out a little bit so it fit on the front of my card box nicely. And I added a tape runner adhesive just to the bottom half of this card. And then I lined it up onto the center of my card box and press that in. I love the way that looks, it's so pretty. And then I'm going to create a bunch of elements to pop up inside of this card to give it that really cool 3D box look. So I'm using this new stamp set from Gina K Designs. I love this stamp set. This is called Luck and Love. This stamp set comes from the February card kit from Gina K Designs. I'll have that linked in the description box down below. It's a limited edition, but an amazingly wicked deal on the price. So you wanna check that out if you like this stamp set. So I'm just gonna load some of those stamps up onto the door of my Misty and condition them because I haven't used them before. So I'm just gonna rub some of that manufacturing residue away. And then I'm going to ink up my stamp. I'm using uh, Christmas Pine ink from Gina K Designs. I tried to incorporate the colors that were in that little special delivery card. So I use that for my inspiration for my stamping. So I'm going to stamp this and then end up stamping it twice. And I love the absolute beautiful green depth that you get when you stamp Christmas Pine twice. It's so crisp and clean and beautiful. I just fell so in love with it. So I'll, I'm gonna stamp a bunch of those leaves. And now I'm gonna stamp the little clover flourish. I thought that was really pretty and delicate. So I'm gonna stamp that a couple of times with Gina K Designs Grass Green Ink. This is a different color green that I'm adding into this project just to lighten it up a little bit. I think it coordinates nicely with the, the pink cardstock, which is, by the way, it is bubblegum pink from Gina K. And then I'm gonna switch over to the little roses and I'm going to use Gina K Designs Dusty Rose Ink for those little roses. And I stamped those twice to get a nice dark rose. And then I decided to stamp with bubblegum pink a couple of times just to tie everything together. So I grabbed a little tiny Gina K Designs Detail Blending Brush. I felt like the lines in behind those flowers were too stark white. So I just grabbed the coordinating ink pad for each flower and just inked up just very lightly in behind those flowers to eliminate that stark white cardstock. Okay, so I'm gonna use my Gemini Junior die cutting machine. I'm gonna cut out all of these flowers. I'll run it through my die cutting machine a couple of times and make sure you tape it down nice and good. My die cutting machine shifted some of my dies and I ended up having to trim some of the edges around the flowers. So they weren't perfect, but it's okay. I still use them anyways, nothing went to waste. 
So I've got all these elements and now I'm just gonna kind of figure out how I want to lay them inside of my box. I'm just taking some adhesive and gluing things down and I'm also being mindful that nothing is going outside of the box when it's laid flat. We don't want anything sticking past the card when it's laid flat. Then this way everything will fit in nicely. So I'm going to adhere those flowers and those leaves and just really creating some dimension. I'm adding some to the front of the box, to the inside of the box, and all in around that little bridge piece. And then our decorating is complete. Actually, it's not. What would a fancy, special, beautiful card be without some gorgeous glittery rhinestones? I think I put 26 rhinestones on the front of this card. It's, it's, that's not normal. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> they're so tiny and cute and they just catch the light so perfectly. And this card was already so elevated that I wanted to make sure that, you know, it was a real statement. We got so much going on in this card and it was actually really simple and easy to make. I grabbed a Gina K Designs Fresh Asparagus slimline envelope to slip this into. I felt like it was just the right color cardstock. Even though there's no fresh asparagus, I felt like it was still pretty. And I'm just gonna make sure those little clovers tuck in and there we go. This card project is complete. Here's a close up look at my special delivery 3D slimline box card. I had so much fun creating this and I hope that you'll take the time to follow along the measurements and create one of these pop-up boxes yourself because they are so much fun and they turn out just stunning. Okay, thanks so much for joining me today. I appreciate the support as always. If you like the content here today, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have you along my card making journey. Coming up on screen are a couple of videos I think you may enjoy. Have yourself a lovely day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.